Hello and welcome to part two of this car modeling tutorial series from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today we're going to be modeling the, the door and side panel and actually part of the roof here on our Porsche car model. And we'll just go ahead and get, get started. What we're going to do basically for the door is actually uh, very, very simple because if you look at this, you'll notice that the door is pretty much just straight across with no deformation aside from the handle. Which if we look at our, our main reference here, we can see that this is the case as you don't, there's no curvature within the door aside from this curve here, which is already replicated on this side here. So we're actually going to be basically be able to just extend this panel th uh, through through the door to create it. And so to do that, first thing, just to be a little less distracting, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my grid. Um, I've um, been finding that I like to do this more and more as it d tends to just get distracting anytime you rotate around your model, since generally when you rotate around you're just trying to get a better look at it, and the grid doesn't serve any purpose at that point. So to, to do the door, I'm going to go ahead and just go into edit mode, and then we're just going to alt right click on this loop here, and then I'm going to use my B and box select tool with right click and drag to deselect these vertices here. Or if you're using Blender 2.5 Alpha or newer, it's actually middle click and drag, and middle click actually works in 2.49 as well. But now I have a separate panel here, and I'm going to go ahead and, well, I was going to go ahead and duplicate it, but first I can see that my, my curve is a little off here, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that first. So we'll just grab these vertices, pull them back along the y-axis with G and Y, just like that, and there we go. So now we'll go ahead and select these, and I'm going to, just for the sake of learning, I'm going to go ahead and show you another technique for selecting, and that is to, if you have a path like this that is a single loop, but if you alt-right click and you select a lot more than you would like, which in this case it's not much, but in some cases this would be, you can actually select the two end vertices, and as long as you have a path between them, hit W and select Vertex Path and then either edge link or topological. And generally, and I mean in this case, either one will work and you'll see it just selects all those vertices. And it just depends on your mesh and how your mesh is structured in terms of whether that will, which one uh, you'll need to use. So we're gonna go ahead and extrude this out. So I'm gonna actually hit Shift D and then grab and Y just a little bit just to get that seam along the door because we wanna separate the, these out into multiple panels. And then we'll just extrude again. And I'm actually going to extrude about to the edge of the mirror and then hit S and Y and then type in zero on my number pad to scale to zero. And you will notice that I had my cursor scaling selected. This was actually unintentional. So if I just hit comma and then G and Y just to pull that back, I'll have a straight panel. And then we're just going to go ahead and extrude this once more right to before the door curves. And we'll just then add in two extra edge loops there to fill out this spacing and make that nice and even. And then we'll extrude this one more time, just about midway, and then begin manually tweaking this to fit the curve of the, the edge of the panel. And so this is just one by one. As our entire car model goes, this will probably be the single easiest section of the entire model. And so relish it while you can. So there we go, that's, I mean, that alone is basically the the gist of the door. As you can see, you know, this will be another panel down here which will then merge into this one and then that actually is cohesive with the entire top as well, although there will actually be a seam right along here, but we'll get to that when when it comes about around. I'm going to go ahead and move these over just a little bit more and that one as well. Okay, now we're not going to do the door handle yet. Uh, we're going to do that in the detailing section where we go in and really nail down a lot of the final details on this. So I'm going to go ahead and select this loop and hit Shift D and move it over again to for, for this next panel. And we can take a look at this and I'm going to compare it to this. And we can see that, or real quick, what I'm comparing is whether or not I need to bring up another loop right here to go up a little further. Since you'll notice on my side reference it doesn't quite fit but on the or on the front but on the side it does. And just so we can get an accurate representation we want to look and see where this kind of comes down and really it's coming down right about the edge of the headlight or so. And so we can see uh, 
compare these, you know, we may go ahead and add an extra loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra loop right here, Control R, just to keep my mesh even. We'll move it up just a little bit to make sure we don't get any flat surfaces. And then I'm going to select this whole loop and using snapping by hitting Shift Tab and you can see that it's selected here and by default it's set to the vertex. We're going to hit E to extrude and then hold down Control and move our mouse around that one vertice there on the end. But you can see we now have a problem. And what the, well, what this has done is just moved it over such that it's in line with this. But we now have a problem in that it's moved along the y-axis too. So we're going to undo that, and we're going to now hit. We're going to extrude it again, and this time we're going to hold down control, or we're going to hit Shift Y, and then hold down Control and lock into that. So this has restricted the movement along the y-axis and only moved it along the x and the y, or the x and the z. So now we have a perfectly positioned vertex. And now looking at this, you can see that we need to go ahead and fix the curve on here because this needs to go back further. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just, well, let's actually look at this to see what we need to do. Okay, we can see that we need to pull both of these back. So we'll just go back like that. Since you can see the edge of this panel goes right up about to the corner of there, which is where this is here. And so bringing that in as a continuous uh, curve here is right about what we're looking for. Okay, so that's good. Let's go ahead and move on to the other side panel like we are going. So we're actually, we're going to go ahead and just move this one back as well. And then we'll do Shift D to duplicate these and snap them along the Y axis to this vertex there. And then we can select everything, remove doubles. Okay, we'll select our loop, and we're going to hit E to extrude, pull it out part way, and then hit S, Y, and 0. This just gives us something that's a little easier to tweak, because you can see we do need to pull these back a little bit, and these, based on the curve of this, we're kind of approximating for that beforehand. And so I'm trying to, you know, make our work in the long run a little easier. So we can pull these forward a little we're starting to kind of get this curve here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and extrude this again all the way to the edge. And then we'll go ahead and pull these out further to fit that that curve, just like that. And now let's look at our model again, and you can see that this is coming out right here. But before I do that, you know, it's a little hard to see in this reference, although you can see it right there. What I'm going to go ahead and do is duplicate our wheel well from the other side. So I'll just select these loops, move it over, and then we're going to go ahead and get rid of all these extra loops that we don't need just for the time being. You know, we may add them in later, but for the time being, we want to go ahead and clean it up so it's nice and smooth. Whoops. I was deleting vertices rather than edge loops. Okay, we get rid of these. And so you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm basically aligning an edge to each one of these. So we've got that one to that one, that one. We'll maybe slide this over a little, pull these up. So again, we're kind of laying out the foundation of our model like we did in the first section to better, more accurately model what we want and to give ourselves a nice base point. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and snap these along the z-axis, just make sure everything's lined up. I'm going to do the same here. There we are. And now we'll go ahead and we're going to select these loops and deselect these other ones, and then we'll just hit F and skin faces or edge loops to fill that in. And when you do that, it, cr it sets them smooth and a lot of times has normal issues, so we'll hit W, set solid, just while we're doing this initial stage, and hit Control N just for safe measures. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select these two, pull them up a little bit more. Okay, now you'll notice what this does too, it starts laying out this edge loop to get this shape in here that's being formed. But also gives us a loop here that we can add in more for, you'll see that there's a little bit of an indent here, so this kind of goes straight up, 
curves in straight up and then curves over and follows in along there. And so that's what we want to replicate here. But I'm going to go ahead and get all the geometry in first. So let's go ahead and pull this up and we're going to extrude these out. So we'll just select it, scale out, pull over, and then we'll fill in this face. And maybe that's a little too much. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and scale these along the z-axis to zero just to make it flat. And then I want to go ahead and put this right at the top along the tip, or actually no, I'm going to extrude it once and put it right at the tip here. So first I'll select this edge, pull or pull both of them in, such that I'm getting that that straight up curve and up, and then we'll curve this one in. And we're going to scale them along the x-axis to zero as well for all of these, since they should be flat, as you can see there. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and fill in these extra loops that are coming through, and which also then, in its own, starts to give us this shape. And this might be an area that'll be a little tricky to get to look look right, but it'll be one of those things that will definitely be tweaked in the final to really ensure that we have it right, or at least we have it accurate enough that no one would ever know the difference without looking comparing it to a blueprint. Which really is kind of the idea here. Since we're modeling off of a visual reference versus a accurate blueprint, we do kind of have to just model to the best of our ability to make it accurate. And you know, that can be very, very difficult at times. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna split this panel up. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit control R and then we're gonna just rotate and then I'll scale along the Y axis just to even up those spaces again. Cause this is gonna be this panel here. So we'll select the loop again and then hit V to split it. This just allows us to get that separation. Okay. I'll go ahead and slide this loop down by selecting it with Alt right click, Control E to edge slide, slide it down to the center there just to even things up. And I'm going to go ahead and add in a second loop here. And the reason being is this then allows me to have this edge, which I can extrude back along this edge, leaving me a <coughs> excuse me, a solid face loop along this edge of the panel, which is one of those things that's very very helpful because that'll what will allow me to add in controlling loops once we add subsurf for things like this to get nice, very sharp edges, which obviously for this is going to be absolutely essential. Okay, now I'm not gonna worry about the back end any further than this yet, because bef when we do that, we're gonna wanna pull in another reference from the back that will allow us to get things more accurate. But I will extrude it once more and pull it back a little bit, and we'll pull this one back just a little bit, just so that we can fill in the rest of the loops that we have. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so we'll pull that back a little bit more. Make sure this is pulled back enough. Just so we're starting to get starting to get that curve there. Okay, but we're not gonna go any further than that with it. Because I want to go ahead and fill in this space. So we'll select these. And using our snapping again, we're gonna hit extrude and shift Y to snap it to, actually sometimes it's easier to do from a different angle, so we'll grab shift Y, snap it to there, okay. The nice thing about snapping is that you don't have to be in a any particular viewport or any particular angle to get it accurate since since it's snapping to that location it's going to be accurate. Okay. So we're making good progress. Let me just bring this up just a little bit. Bring this over a little. And I'm just, you know, right now, since I don't have a back view of this, even though, you know, we'll pull one in later, I'm just kind of, I'm positioning it about where I think it'll be, and then we will adjust it as we need to later on. You know, I think I've said this before in previous tutorials, but I'll say it again, in that a huge part of modeling, honestly, is is tweaking. 
it's quite common to spend more time tweaking your model than you do modeling the the actual shape. And I think that's something that is probably true of of all modelers. And I have lost. Oh, I'm tweaking the wrong wrong vertices there. Okay. So there we go. That's that. Now let's go ahead and real quick here, we're going to go ahead and model the the basic top. And so on the top here, we're going to first go ahead and model. Oh, I'm going to smooth that out just a little bit. Okay. On the top, we're first going to model this top or this slide here, which we can see we're going to create from these two vertices. Since you'll notice that lines up pretty well there, and we're just going to use a single edge for it. So I'm going to hit Shift D, move it up just slightly, and then extrude all the way up to the top. We'll pull it in. Maybe scale along the x-axis. Just about like that. And remember, we're having to compensate pretty, pretty severely in some of these cases in order to um, compensate for the differences between our references and the angle of photography and whatnot. Just as long as you keep that in mind, then you can work around it. And on this part, we're just going to extrude this straight along and back there. So we'll just extrude this. Then I'm going to rotate a little and then scale along the y-axis to flatten that out. Okay. And then we're just going to extrude straight back. Just generally matching the the shape of it. I'm going to go ahead and throw in an extra edge for where I know I'll extrude that later on. And I'm going to roughly extrude this the number of times to fit my edges down here. We can also scale these up. Okay, now we need to look at our car and kind of figure out what this shape is. We can see it's going up a little bit, and it curves in, and then it appears to curve out. So we'll follow that same shape. We'll bring this out to... We're going to actually turn on proportional editing, and then change this over to connected, such that it'll only modify those that are directly connected to it, such that if we hit X and pull it out, rotate along the curve, it'll go like that. But instead, since you'll notice we're getting kind of this S curve, which we don't want, I'm going to change this over to a a sharp fall off, which will give me the opposite of that. Allow me to pull that out like so. Okay. And again, we're, we're just modeling to the best of our ability to see the accuracy because then we'll be able to model, you know, tweak it once we finalize the shape to really nail down the actual form of what we're looking at. I'm going to turn off proportional editing at this point. So then I'm going to go ahead and add in an extra loop right here because I can see I'm going to need to connect this so we'll just go ahead and fill in that face now which will also kind of tell us what we need to do in terms of form so we can see we're going to need to add in another loop here to which we'll rotate along the z-axis pull this back a little about like that and then I am actually uh, well no never mind I'm going to ignore what I was about to say and just pretend that I didn't say it. Okay, we're almost done here. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is just extrude the top of the car, which is, as you can guess, is going to be very simple. It's just basically straight over. And so you can see that the top of the window is here. So I'm going to slide this loop down just a little. And then we're going to select all of this and we're going to hit shift D move it over because you can see there is a seam here although actually no I'm gonna extrude it once first because you can see that on this there's this slight curve right here in the corner and so this will allow me to at least get the foundations for where that will be and now we will hit shift D to get the extra panel and then we'll just extrude it and extrude scale along the x-axis to zero to straighten it out and once more and it gives us the top so now you can really you can actually see how that really helps because it really starts to pull the car together and we can say hey look we've we've got a car it's not just a a random model anymore and so looking at this you can see that 
it would appear to me that we're definitely going to need to add a qu quite a bit more volume in here to account for this shape. But again, I'm going to wait to do that until we get the back end modeled, so because that will definitely give us a little more insight into what we're doing and what needs to be done still. So we're pretty much there. I'm going to go ahead and call that. Oh, nope, we've got one more piece to model, and that's this portion right here. Which to do this, I'm just going to select this entire thing. I'm going to. Uh, no, actually, I'm going to first. This is going to be a kind of a two part step. I'm going to extrude this down like so, and then I'm going to select these, hit Shift D to duplicate, and then I'm actually going to hide those and pull these up just a little bit. Because now when I unhide them, you can see we've got this space here, at which point we're going to go ahead and merge these. So we'll just merge them at center. and merge these, but I'm going to merge it at last this time so that it stays right there. And then we'll go ahead and select this and we're going to hit E to extrude, grab Z and snap to that vertice and W remove doubles. If you want to avoid removing the doubles, you can actually go to view and, or excuse me, I believe it's mesh and turn on auto merge editing. This way, if you say, let's say we're going to uh, shift D to duplicate this and we're going to go down here, and then we're going to hit E to extrude, Z to snap, and hold down control, that automatically merged it to remove the doubles. And so this is a very handy thing that can just remove some steps in the process. Okay, now to get this form, I'm going to go ahead and select these, and looking at this, we can see that we've got to kind of think on how this is shaped. Okay, so there is a, we're going to find my model again. One thing that we didn't do before, I'll go ahead and do it now, is you can see there's actually a, this part lowers in or goes in a little bit from the wheel well. And so we need to go ahead and what I'll do to make this easier, since this is, it goes all the way around, you know, including, well, not here, but all the way in there. So we're going to select, uh, let's see how we want to do this. We're going to add in an extra loop here and then we're going to okay this is what we're going to do we're going to select this loop and we're going to hit control e to edge slide okay we're going to have to do this one at a time control e to edge slide slide it up do the same thing here and then we're going to add in an extra loop there because what this then allows us to do is pull in these areas around it to get that extra deformation. And it appears to go all the way to about here. And we need to pull in or grab any accompanying vertices right next to it so that we don't screw up our entire shape. And then we're just going to pull that in slightly along the x-axis and we'll kind of f smooth it out off a little bit such that there's a fall off on it. Okay, there we go. And then we'll maybe pull these out a little along the x-axis to smooth it out. See if there's any areas we need to tweak. We can see we need to pull this out a little bit. Pull this out. And then we need to go ahead and select our entire door panel, or the entire bottom section. And we want to go ahead and snap it along the x-axis to those. So we get this arc down here. And then you can see that we need to do the same thing here, but what we're going to do here is, since you can see it smooths out here, is we're actually going to um, we're going to pull in or pull out, excuse me, we're going to grab this, snap it to the x along that, and then we're going to select this vertice hit V or V to split and sometimes you kinda have to do this in a couple of uh, it's not gonna want to it's not wanting to work so instead of what we're gonna do we're gonna hit X or select this edge delete edges and then we're going to hit E to extrude and snap it to here and then we're going to hit select the edge hit W subdivide add in an extra loop right towards the end 
extrude all three of these along the y-axis to there with auto merge on it automatically merges them and then we can fill these three into a single face right there and then if we add in an extra loop here scale along the y-axis just to smooth it fill in these faces you can see we're going to get this nice ridge that then smooths out so then we can actually go ahead and extrude this very quickly along the y-axis to each one of these just be sure that you snap it to the y otherwise you may see um, if we don't snap it to the y well actually that it does work in this case because it's set to closest but if it were say the center you can see that it's going to snap to the center vertice with the closest since this edge is the closest to that vertice then it works no problem oh. There we go. And you can see I'm actually going to undo what I just did there on this one alone because this is going to merge in there as well. But we're going to ignore that for the time being. Since we've already got the uh, excuse me, got the foundation down, this should leave us at a good stopping point for today. So the next section, we will look at modeling the back and then uh, within the next few sections we'll look at the windows, the wheels, the details, etc. And before long, we're going to have a finished car model. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. Again, my name is Jonathan Williamson. Feel free if you need any help, if you missed any parts on the video, if I mumbled, whatever it is, uh, feel free to leave a comment or uh, email a support ticket to support at cgcookie.zendesk.com, I believe is the email address, but you can find it from the support page directly if that is incorrect, um, if my memory is failing me like it tends to. Uh, again, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you next time.